are live. Welcome to Andor Season 1, Episode 12. The episode is called Rick's Road. So, spoilers for basically everything Star Wars up to this point. I personally thought this was a really great season finale. I didn't really feel like any characters just, like, got lost or remained in the background or anything like that. And I like that, you know, we open on these dark storm cloud, you know, it's, it sets the tone. This is, this is a sad day for the, you know, the people of Ferrix and a great day for the Empire, the, the dark forces. And Dedra is all business as usual. She'll eat later. And Zan, you know... Good heart, but the guy really is not great at, you know, we saw, when, when he was on the radio with Cass, it was this thing of, you know, stop saying Cass's name. And the, the, ah, what's it called? You know, now he approaches Brasso in public and talks about, you know, Cass is going to, you know, yeah. That, that he heard from Cass, and Cass knows about the funeral. And I believe it is Nurchi who overhears it. And I appreciate, you know, Dedra, Corvo, and Sin... You know, they're all undercover. And Nurchi talks to San, getting him drunk, hoping to... You know, basically... Zan is his meal ticket. You know, if Zan will just... You know, if Zan tells the the Imperials that you know Cass, yeah, that's you know it's they're not going to take Nurchi's word for it, and this despite the fact that Cass repaid his debts to everyone on Ferrix with his share of the Aldani heist. So yeah, and Mon is sure. Perrin is gambling, and if he gets nervous, he might even re resort to death sticks. And the driver is listening to them, even though they asked for privacy. And and she's like, you know, don't 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 gamble in Coruscant. Go to Canto Bight. I'm not sure that's a great idea. There's already a lot of people who are not feeling this show. Reminding them of the sequel trilogy is not going to do it any favors. I, as usual, really, really love the... Yeah, I've, I've loved every single episode. And, yeah, Cinta and Vel... You know, Cinta, all business, and, and Vel is like, you know, come... I think she just says, come, come... Come away from the window or something. And we don't really see, but clearly, you know, Vel has missed her. And... I might as well. There we go. Yeah, so let's see. Yeah, and, you know, Cass goes to uh, his, his adoptive father's brick, and we get that memory, and, you know, his, his father, you know, yeah, it's, it's a good point. You know, people would rather have something new that's more expensive than something that, you know, they would, con you know, a lot of people would consider outdated. You know, and that little detail of we, we got to hurry up so Marva doesn't catch us doing this in the house. You know, the, the, the guy doesn't really appreciate that she wants to keep things clean. And... And, you know, Cass meets back up with Pegla, and we hear some of Nemec's, uh, you know, manifesto. He's a really great writer. Not sure that it's completely necessary for Cass to listen to it without earbuds, but okay, he's not in public, so fair enough. And Sniper does not want... De Debra, Dedra does not want Sniper. She wants Cassian alive. And we see Mon Mothma's driver snitch, and see, and and Dedra is unhappy that all of Krieger's men are are dead, that there's no one to get 
to, to question. And let's see. Yeah, and and Corvo realizes, you know, no, that's not the guy. You know, the the. I think it was Brasso who swapped someone out, and Brasso and Cassian talk really emotional speech. The the tell him, you know, and yeah. The, the you know basically like Brasso wishes that Cassian would leave immediately and but you know for for his own safety but you know what's he gonna do Cassian has you know he's a he's a strong-willed person he doesn't completely yet you know appreciate the the danger or uh, he appreciates the danger but he, he values the the closure more and you know luthan says they'll find him and we you know they find him we kill him and yeah you know i like how the 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 episode make sure we see you know everyone moves into place before the funeral starts and Cass watches Corvo and spots Luthen, you know, and, and as he says later, he has realized Luthen must be here to kill him. And, let's, yeah, Nurchie wants double the reward and a ride out, asks for pretend arrest, immediately regards his decision. No, I need him alive. Don't make me say it again. Say again? And Bix hums along to the music, wanting to be part of that world. And Cyril recognizes Dedra, wants to go directly to her. The funeral march is very powerful. And the, the chant of stone and sky. And we get the hologram of Marva. And it's a great speech right from the start. And, of course, she speaks against the Empire. You know, the funeral is already because of them. It may not have been murder, but it was the Empire's fault. And I guess it's, again, this thing of, like, did the Empire... I guess it, it points to, to, you know, Dedra sometimes does get results, but she can sometimes kind of... Ah, you know, some, sometimes she's a little too eager and too sure that she can control everything because she's used to being able to control everything as the, you know, ISB officer, I mean, really, she, they, sh I, I, no, I don't think they knew that, that Marva was going to, you know, even, even the hologram itself was probably a surprise to them, and that goes to, if they, if they had more respect for the cultures that they try to crush, they would, look into because that's kind of like you know if you if you don't have too much faith if you have a have an accurate amount of faith in your people your side you're gonna be like okay what does this funeral entail is anyone gonna have a speech that might be against us you know but yeah they're so convinced and of course you know, Corvo runs up, covers B2 Emu, which starts this fight, and I'm just going to make sure, no, that's something I can wait, and the, yeah, you know, Cassian makes it to, to where Bix is, and, you know, at first she is not very, uh, she doesn't, she doesn't get up right away, uh, you know, understandably. I, she, she really continues to do excellent acting. She really, like, this woman is a shell of her former self, you know. I really appreciate that we got to see what she was like before. Because she wasn't this weak, like, she was she was also a strong-willed person, you know. So, we do see how, like, this torture they, they used on her was really just, yeah, it, it, it crushed her. And... We see the this this kid, like we you know you got the sense when we saw him very carefully preparing it. Was that a st 
Yeah, I think we it starts at the very start of the episode, and then I th does maybe cut back to it once or twice. Like, you know, whether it's a bomb or something, it's it's definitely not. You know, he's he's not like assembling. I don't know a music box or something. It's definitely something threatening. You know, and he throws it, and he apparently threw it right at the the exact spot where they were keeping all these grenades or was that also played like certainly there was more there than what he I, th I think it was where the the empire kept the or not the entire empire obviously but the people the empire the people from the empire that are on ferrix right now you know and let's see. yeah you know the order is given open fire fire at will does anybody remember who will is there's so many characters in the show and Zan is killed. Cinta stabs Corvo. I really, she she is really good at this spy thing because she's like, she looks scared of him. She looks like, oh no, I got too close to him. I screwed up. What is gonna happen now? And it was it was part of the plan. She knows that if he sees her like that, he's gonna assume that he has the drop on her. That that he's in control. When really she, you know, she even she backs into this like door, you know, and and like it looks to him and to us though we honestly we should have known, but I should have known better. It looks like oh she's like she's gonna try to to run into the building to get away from it. No, no, no. she just needs to get him in front of so she can stab him and place him in the hallway, close the door. And she just move on, you know, she's, she does the, 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 you know, don't worry, it's not my blood. And we see Detra as we've rarely seen her before, not in control of her situation. And Ciro manages to get her away. I gotta admit, I wasn't entirely sure, and I think that was intentional, like, you know, the, the, is he... Cause, cause he's he seems kind of possessive of her now, you know. Is is he gonna do something, or is it just you know? Cause, yeah, and you know he thought that she forgot his name, and yeah. I uh, yeah, I didn't note when, but at some point it cut back to B two, who's like still like you know who, caught in the middle of this whole thing and. Yeah, that was, you know, yeah, it, it, it was very unpleasant to, to see this kind of, yeah. And, yeah, they're, they're about to fly off, and, and Cassian says he's not going with them. And, you know, he tells B2, I'm counting on you to, to you know, keep, keep Big safe from me, for me, not from me, wow. I'm counting on you, and B2, you know, responds, you always say that, to which Cassian responds, and you always come through, so that, that was very, very sweet, I, I really like that moment, and we see Mon, you know, bringing Leda to meet the, the mob guys, son and you know and and yeah Leda legitimately does look like you know because she yeah she believes in the old way she thinks that it is a good thing to to so so she yeah as heartbreaking as it is to watch it might be the first thing that Mon has done that Leda has approved of in a long time and let's see yeah, and and the the you know Lu uh, Cassian approaches Luthen and you know you you came to kill me, and uh, you know he basically he says you know if if you want to kill me, you know I accept that, but if you're not gonna kill me, I'm I'm coming with you. I'm I'm you know I'm in the Rebel Alliance now, you know so that's. That's a really great place to, to end season one, uh, you know, so.
and yeah, um, if you didn't let the, the credits run, because I think this is the first, but there is a post credit scene to this episode, you know, of the of the Death Star being built, and yeah, make make sure that you you know it's it's at the end of the regular credits before they start with the uh, voice cast for non English countries, you know. Now that is just about the end here. Okay, so right, you know. I just checked, Jesse Gender has not yet done a video on this episode, but, you know, I, I'm pretty sure she's done one on every single other episode, and they've all been great, so, you know, once it's up, make sure you watch that, and, yeah, um, I am gonna give a, a quick ranking, worst to best all the seasons of live action Disney Plus Star Wars show shows up to this point and if I yeah the the only one that um, let's see I guess I should say there's I feel there's something to love about all of them I'm not the biggest fan of the first two though but yeah so worst to best Boba Fett, Obi-Wan, Mandalorian Season 1, Mandalorian Season 2, and Andor Season 1. This is definitely the best, in my opinion, this is the best Star Wars live-action anything in quite some time. This is much better than the more recent movies. You know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Rogue One. I do think there's a lot of great to it, but I feel like this show, this season at least, and... I'd be surprised if season two not also, but anyway, I feel like this season took all of the good from that sh that movie and got rid of all the bad, like the the just yeah. So and and you know I've made some jokes in these videos. I really have almost no problems with this entire season. I feel like every character, like I don't. F uh, Every character deserved as much screen time as they got, at least. I suppose... No, I don't even think... I, I don't think that there were any that got less than they deserved. You know, even... Yeah, even ones that, like, Zan, you know, I don't think he's had very much screen time. Um, Brasso and Bix have gotten a bit more. but But, yeah, you know, there are... And, and, yeah, Bix, like, I really appreciate that her character didn't become boring once, you know, like I said, she's a, she's a shell of her former self, but you still see, like, she recognizes the funeral, um, uh, song? M music, uh, you know, and the, the, you know, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit still there. You know, she's not uh, com completely, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, she can still, base, you know, understand what's what's close to her, and she recognizes Cassian, you know, she remembers Marva, had dreams about the two, you know, these kinds of things. Um, yeah, uh, I think... Um, I am just really quickly, because there's something I wanted to quote. So let's see. There's um, uh, is it this 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 one? Yeah. So I am um. Okay, I'm just gonna... Uh, how do I get to it then? I guess if I click this, I should be able to... Okay, so... Huh. Uh... Oh. It was not this one then. 
Okay, I swear I'm not going to spend forever trying to find... Okay, it's got to be this then. And for some reason, it still won't. Okay, so here and here and... Let's see... Yeah, the... the uh, so, I want to start by saying this is not... I'm not... I'm not putting him on blast here. Arts Cafe, longtime subscriber, frequent commenter, posted a comment on my video for episode 9 of this season. And, yeah, 100%, this is not a criticism. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm going to quote directly. He, he wrote, Not sure if I care about any of the characters enough, like all other shows, I don't know. And... I can completely understand that, which is also, yeah, my exact quote is, I can totally understand that. I would say that the characters are not, I, I, I feel like this is also one of the shows where I've, I've heard people say, to talk about if characters are likable, and I, uh, I believe it was Luke Mockfrey who said that characters don't have to be likable, they can be a-holes, but then they have to be interesting a-holes. If they're just a-holes, we're not going to care. But, you know, and I would say everyone on this show is interesting. There's no character on this show that is just, like... I've, I've never watched an episode and a character comes on and I'm like, ugh, this one again. I don't, I don't care. Let's just move on. Every single one of them has been been interesting. You know, I really appreciate. Like at first, it looked like Leda. I wasn't really expecting the show to have a character that just didn't have any depth to them because that would, like, why have even one when you're when you're doing such a good job adding depth to all of them. At first, we didn't really know. We just, it, you know, it's just, you know, she says that Mon Mothma only thinks of herself. Everything's about her or something like that. And I suppose, yeah, you know, at, at first glance, it might seem like, oh, you know, typical teenager, she's difficult and such. But then you realize, you know, she actually, she buys Mon's act. She thinks that Mon is just this, you know she she doesn't do enough i suppose we don't know exactly how leda feels about the empire but certainly she doesn't think that yeah i mean i suppose you know whether whether you like you either think that mon Mo if if you only know the surface of mon moth man you either think she's just she's not getting anything done why am i supporting her you know, she says she's for the thing, you know, when she talks about issues, it sounds like, you know, that's stuff I care about, but she doesn't accomplish anything. She's completely, you know, that's, you know, that's one option. And the other option is, yeah, the Empire themselves and, and their supporters basically think of her as a nuisance. Like, she's, oh, wow, this, uh oh, Okay, fine. Let her speak. You know, eventually she'll she'll yield her time. It's it's fine. She doesn't get anything done anyway. You know, and yeah, Leda. We don't know exactly where she is, but certainly she appears to. You know, she she likes the old ways more. You know, and yeah, I, you know that's that's interesting. Instead of her just being either, you know. Yeah, and the the so so yeah, basically you know the characters who've gotten very little screen time. I um, let's see what's the word. The characters who've gotten very little screen time are. Um, I don't want to say less interesting, but I I think they've done a good job of. Like, focusing on the ones that are the most interesting and the most relevant. The the ones that... Yeah. So, I think that is 
everything that I had to say. So, yeah, you know, by and large, it did this thing of three episode arcs, you know, and I feel like that worked well. You know, there was the, the let's see, um, not the episode of last week, not, not episode 11, but episode 10, I think, was the actual culmination to the arc that began with, uh, I guess, episode 7. So there it was a four-episode instead of three-episode. And then here we have a two-episode instead of three-episode. But yeah, I, I feel like they've done a, a really good job. Um, this is definitely the best paced. This is probably the best paced Disney Plus show, whether we're talking Star Wars or MCU, honestly. I don't think... There's been an MCU show that had as spot-on pacing as as this. So, uh, yeah, you know, if, if this is how it works best, I hope they do this more. Or, you know, it's fine if they don't do... Just, you know, find something that works really well. And this worked really, really well. Um, I think that is everything. But, but yeah... Um, it's going to be really difficult to wait for, for season two, but the, ah, let's see, the, um, ah, I think, I feel like Ahsoka is next, so, and, yeah, by the time I watch it, I will not have, you know, I am going to be watching animated Star Wars, uh, you know, I'm planning on the, the, um, the shows that are now getting, you know, follow-ups, uh, at, at the very least, but I am not gonna get, you know, currently I'm doing uh, Marvel Netflix, so, but once I'm done with that, then I'm moving on to the, yeah, but, yeah, I, I, I am looking forward to Ahsoka as well. I think Rosario Dawson, I mean, I don't think I've ever disliked a performance by her, so it's it's great. You know, really, yeah. And I understand she's a very popular character. You know, I, I, I did watch the movie back when it came out, uh, the Clone Wars movie, which I really feel like they should have given a subtitle so that when people say The Clone Wars, it's completely clear whether we're talking, although I hear, you know, Having not watched the rest of the show, I hear that the movie is equivalent to, I guess, four episodes smushed together. So, but, but yeah, you know, I do vaguely recall her from that, but I only watched it once back in 2008 when it came out. So, but the, any, anyway, yeah, I, yeah, I really enjoyed this. So I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments. And, yeah, I will be recording, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but there will be more videos forthcoming. And, yeah, so, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. Catch you next time.